like to acknowledge the First Nations on whose ancestral lands were gathered here today, the Anishinaabek, the Assiniboine, the Sioux and the Cree. I'm going to tell you about Solus House. It's the low energy passive solar home that I designed and built 30 years ago. But my story is also about living peaceably and sustainably on a stressed planet that seems fixated on fossil fuel. What if we could embrace the sun and move from being consumers to conservers? First, a little background. I was raised in somewhat gloomy Central Europe. My parents were religious pacifists whose focus in life was helping others. We lived frugally, so a consumer lifestyle was fairly foreign to me. And we didn't own much. But what I did inherit was an ethical compass, um, a, a call to peacemaking, and a desire to shape a better world. My tale today starts with the turning point of my own destiny on the early morning of October 6, 1973, when Egyptian and Syrian forces invaded Israel in what would come to be known as the Yom Kippur War. Within a week, the U.S. launched an airlift to deliver supplies um, and weapons to Israel, including dozens of F-4 uh, Phantom fighter bombers. Five days after that, OPEC oil ministers decided to use oil uh, as a weapon and created an embargo, uh, and, and that created a clear link between uh, energy supplies and global conflict. Oil prices skyrocketed, fuel became scarce, and suddenly the so-called developed world was embroiled in the 1973 oil crisis. I was working at the time with Operation Palm Branch, an African relief mission based in Bavaria, as part of a team delivering salvaged military all-terrain vehicles that we acquired from NATO maneuvers and converted into mobile clinics for use in northern Congo. Our civilian convoy of Mercedes Unimogs was scheduled to cross the Mediterranean from Genoa, Italy to Tunis on October 8th, beginning the grueling trip that would take us south across the Sahara. With Arab North Africa now involved in the conflict, entry visas for Tunisia and Algeria were annulled, as were my plans to spend the next two years in Central Africa. Two months later, at the age of 19, I stepped off a plane <laughs> into a bitter Winnipeg night. <laughs> uh, the temperature was a numbing uh, 35 below, and the blowing snow chilled me to the bone. While driving across the flat prairie the next day, I felt the incredible power of the sun beating down from an impossibly blue sky, a day very much like today, actually. And this seeming contradiction between hot and cold made an unforgettable impression on me. I married a nice girl from small town, Manitoba. I went to college for a few years, and then I started a business in Winnipeg. Meanwhile, I immersed myself in Canadian culture. I learned how to dress for the cold, and I tried to adapt to the frontier thinking that I encountered here. Perhaps most importantly, I fell in love with nature. Um, this anchored me. It quickly became a dominant force in my life. I bought a canoe. I soaked up survival skills. I learned how to hunt and fish. And I spent every available opportunity exploring nature's lessons. I was really thrilled to have landed here on the doorstep of vast, unspoiled wilderness. This is an amazing place, by the way, when you come from somewhere else. I photographed the four seasons. I painted landscapes. I illustrated wildlife, and I soaked in information on ecology. I was passionate about conservation, and I began to dream of a home off the grid, in the woods, and independent of conventional energy supplies. The cold winters perpetuated my interest in solar energy, and as I looked around, I was absolutely shocked that nobody seemed to be using the available power of the sun to heat, to heat structures here. Um, did you know that Manitoba has the clearest skies and the greatest number of sunny winter days in this country? You know that because you look outside. <laughs> yeah. 
By the late 1970s, that's just a few years ago, uh, futurists were predict predicting dire consequences if wasteful consumption was not curbed. I was convinced that conserving energy and the use of clean, free solar heat were the way of the future. I was insomniac at the time. And so that gave me a lot of nights to read and to draw plans um, and to look into available information on alternative, alternative and uh, solar architecture. In order to learn basic construction skills, I volunteered my time to help build a few barns. I eagerly absorbed whatever I could find on experimental housing, and I was inspired by the Saskatchewan Conservation House. There were some real visionaries uh, back at that time. Built in 1977, it achieved dramatic energy savings. It had proved the viability of super insulation, airtight construction, and heat recovery ventilation in a harsh prairie climate. 1979 brought on the second so-called energy crisis following the Iranian Revolution. You folks are pretty young here today. Most of you won't remember the Ayatollah Khomeini. Maybe you've heard the name. The price of oil nearly tripled. Long lines again appeared at gas stations. And when a 40-acre piece of woodland uh, just off the eastern edge of the prairie became available, I jumped at the chance. During the first fall, we carefully cut trees for a road in a small clearing. My own limited financial means, together with discouraging conversations with many local building experts, uh, most of them who you know, expressed resistance to new ideas, uh, made it clear that designing and building uh, a sustainable home would really become a do-it-ourselves project for my wife and I. Right from the start, the hands-on approach attracted support from what I would call mostly helpful friends and family members. <laughs> I finalized the blueprints for Solus House during the winter, and building materials were delivered when the snow melted in April of 1980. Uh, the foot-thick concrete walls and lower floor were poured by a local fellow, and from there on up, it became a matter of a labor of love and endless hammer swings. The main floor made a suitable platform for fabrication of the 39 web trusses that form the super-insulated roof structure. Enthusiastic efforts of volunteers were gratefully put to use, regardless of skill levels. Here you can see the harnessed power of sister-in-laws at work. Thanks to long summer evenings and numerous work bees on weekends, the structure was erected and enclosed by July, and it was insulated by late fall. Though putting in windows, staircases, plumbing, electrical, and finishing the interior and exterior would stretch out for another year. Here you can see additional layers of insulation going into the double wall structure. I chose unfinished western red cedar for the roof shakes and exterior siding for its natural resistance to decay. You don't need to use any finishing on it and because over time, it would turn silver-gray and blend into the forest setting. Here's Solus House a few years later. Um, there are some carpeted decks on the south side here. These hinge up at night in wintertime, and they close the whole south wall uh, to, to keep the heat in. We don't have time for a lot of detail, but I'll quickly touch on two of the basic principles of low energy passive solar. Um, insulation, which you all know, and insolation, both of which we can learn from nature. We all know how insulation works to prevent the loss of heat. So mammals grow thicker fur in the wintertime, uh, birds fluff up their down when it's cold, and a deep blanket of snow acts as a protective layer. Historically, Canadian prairie homes have been remarkably poor when it comes to insulation. Uh, Saltbox-style houses of the 1930s benefited from mul multiple stories, but they had next to no insulation. The typical house of 1980 had uh, R12 insulation in 2 by 4 walls, but quite an inefficient shape with a greater uh, exterior surface to interior volume ratio in that regard. In Solus House, it has a small footprint uh, it's uh, an open space, so there's a natural convection loop inside the house. 
very high levels of insulation and insulating shutters that come up at night in wintertime. Uh, people called me crazy at the time. Not so much anymore. Uh, thanks to careful detailing and completely airtight construction, uh, Solus House uses less than 15% of the energy of a typical Manitoba home. Uh, this is a, a detail of a double wall construction. Um, so there are three layers of fiberglass that are incorporated. You can see them here. Those are the pink ones. Um, and the key is that um, there's a two by six load bearing wall on the inside with structural sheathing and a six mil poly vapor barrier that runs on the inside of the st structural sheathing. I'll get back to why that's important. And on the outside, uh, a non-load bearing two by three wall basically holds on the exterior siding in that regard. The electrical wiring, uh, switches, boxes, can all run inside of that vapor barrier without it needing to be damaged in any way. And that allows you to have airtight construction, and uh, that's a big key in terms of efficiency. The core principle for passive solar capture is insolation, which means to place in the sun or expose to the sun. Flowers teach us this beautifully. Uh, they open up and turn to face the source of life. And, um, you know, there's a lot of solar energy available. Did you know that this, the amount of sun that hits the earth in one hour is greater than all of the energy that we as a species use in a year? It's truly remarkable. So the sun is a universal energy source. It's inexhaustible and it's also indigenous. And I love that. Indigenous means local everywhere. It's a great equalizer. Uh, capturing the sun to heat living spaces isn't rocket science and it's not new. Humans understood this uh, back as far as the Neolithic. And here you can see evidence uh, today still in uh, China, Turkey, Jordan, and New Mexico. And here's how it works. Being closely tied to sun and season, not clock and calendar as we are today, ancient cave dwellers observed naturally what is missed by many of us in the fast-paced rat race that we're in. So in summertime, the sun angle is really high. In wintertime, the sun angle is low. Um, in summer, cave dwellers would move to the front of the cave where they would benefit from cooling breezes and they would have shade. And in wintertime, they would simply move to the back of the cave where they would be warmed by low-angled sun and perhaps a small fire to help heat the rock around them. Thanks to the 23 and a half degree tilt of the Earth's axis, which gives us the seasons, the total difference in sun angle anywhere on Earth during a six month period is 47 degrees, so two times 23 and a half. At 50 degrees north latitude, such as in Winnipeg here, uh, the sun angle at the winter solstice is 16 and a half degrees, and at the summer solstice, 63 and a half degrees. The difference is the 47 degrees between uh, summer and winter. And uh, keeping that in, in mind when designing is what allows uh, you to calculate sunlight penetration. Optimal orientation and sighting of a home assures a high level of unobstructed winter sunshine. So Solus House faces due south. It's protected on the north by a garage, and it's surrounded by deciduous trees. It's in the woods. Uh, those offer shade in summer, and yet the sun can penetrate through the bare branches in winter to warm the home. In addition, planted conifers on the northwest provide protection from prevailing winds. Uh, a berm on the west side um, adds earth-sheltered tempering. Uh, airlock vestibules on the two entrances uh, also reduce air infiltration. On the south side, the shutters come up at night to protect that. On the east side uh, is a wood stack uh, that holds three winters worth of heat and uh, raised garden beds to allow for organic gardening. Uh, here's a view of the yard from the top of the house. And uh, here on the west side are climbing vines that help shade that facade uh, on late afternoon, uh, late summer afternoons and keep that cooler. Here's Solus House in winter. 
on a day like this, warm and cozy, even in the coldest weather. A cross section looks like this. So aside from moderately sized windows on the east and west side that allow for side ventilation, all glazing is on the south facade. Uh, a cut back main floor allows the winter sun to heat the thermal mass in the lower level. So the sun shines right into the lower level and it heats up all this concrete and granite around an airtight wood stove. And the key here is insulation on the exterior, so that acts as a heat sink. Uh, precisely calculated overhangs make sure that there's uh, full winter penetration and no summer sunshine comes into the house at all. So that means it stays really cool in summer with no need for air conditioning. And uh, the shutters on the south side come up at night, uh, keep in the heat, and the vertical, uh, the open vertical layout allows for a natural convection loop with no needs, need for uh, fans or ducting. Um, there's an interstitial greenhouse down here, so you can grow, you know, veggies and uh, herbs in the wintertime. And up on top, uh, a nice little star lookout for meditation at treetop level. I've now lived in Solus House for 30 years without a furnace. Um, the house works exactly as designed. It's comfortable year-round. It needs less than 15% of the energy used by a conventional Canadian home. The majority of that heat is provided by the sun, which is free. Um, there's a lot more detail than I could get into here in this session. I am very happy to share information with anyone who's interested. When I was born, the human population was 2.7 billion. When I started building Solus House, it was 4.4 billion. In November, uh, two months ago, the United Nations informed us that we're now at over 7 billion human beings. Today, our ecological footprint is already 1.4 planet Earths. Um, we are threatened by what could be irreversible climate change, and the news is once again full of saber-rattling, uh, wars about oil. Choosing a low-energy passive solar housing solution helped fulfill my own goals of living simply, being close to nature, and acting as a conserver. And I hope my sharing of this story will inspire others. Thank you. <laughs>